Think AI, smartphones, and self-parking cars are cutting edge? In the 1920s, they were already here, just made of brass, mercury, and a lot of hope. Heated mittens, pocket phones, a mechanical brain that solved math faster than humans. They were basically inventing our entire future, one slightly dangerous gadget at a time. So let's take a look at 10 wild inventions from 100 years ago, proving the roaring 20s were way ahead of their time. This is Hidden Lens History. Hawthorne, Nevada, December 30th, 1922. For the first time in history, a seaplane was successfully catapulted off a battleship. Yep, decades before Top Gun, the US Navy was already flinging aircraft into the sky. The paper called it a feat achieved only after 12 years of intensive designing and experimentation. The launch took place aboard the USS Oklahoma, just off the coast of Los Angeles. Imagine being the first pilot to hear, don't worry, we think the catapult works now. It worked, the plane flew, and just like that, battleships became floating airfields. If you look closely, you can see floats not just where the wheels would be, but also under the wings. This kept the plane steady in rough water after landing. A crane would then lift it back on board, reset it, and prep for another launch. That single experiment, it became the blueprint for the modern aircraft carrier. And a hundred years later, we're still launching jets off steel decks, just with a little more thrust and a little less prayer. South Bend, Indiana, February 17, 1924. Parallel parking was already a headache in the 1920s. So one Baltimore engineer said he'd cracked it. Victor P. Williams spent eight years developing a hydraulic jack system that lifted a car off the ground then slid it sideways into a space. No more back and forth, no more tire wear, just lift, shift, and glide to the curb. He claimed it weighed under 100 pounds, cost $100, and ran off the car's own engine. A few years later, a Connecticut paper reported Mrs. Miriam Williams' similar design, described as simpler, lighter, and easier to attach. And they weren't alone. Patent records show dozens of inventors chasing the same idea, including Brooks Walker, who spent his career refining a hidden fifth wheel that could lift and pivot a car sideways. From 1928 to 1981, he filed patent after patent, gave live demos, and never convinced a single automaker to bite. Meanwhile, back in the 1920s, some garages skipped innovation entirely and just installed turntables to spin cars around. Because if you can't park smarter, at least park dramatically. New Britain, Connecticut, December 20th, 1926. Long before streaming services or spinning buffering wheels, Dr. E. F. W. Alexanderson unveiled something truly wild, radio movies. His invention could, according to the paper, flash on a screen visions of events happening many miles away. Reporters said it gave the effect of motion pictures, only live. The photo shows Alexanderson pointing to a cluster of lights that do the projecting. No one called it television yet. They called it seeing by radio. Within a few years, his company, RCA, would broadcast the first televised image. So if you've ever binged a show until 3 a.m. or watched a presidential debate on mute, you've got this 1920s wizard and his glowing bulbs to thank for the privilege. New Britain Herald, October 18, 1929. MIT scientists built a machine so advanced, they nicknamed it the mechanical brain. The article headline declared, New device trebles powers of mechanical brain. Invented by Dr. Vannevar Bush. Yes, the same Bush who'd later design early computers. This device could solve equations too complex for the human mind. It handled in eight minutes, computations that would keep an engineer busy for a month to a year. It even had a new lobe that let it solve sixth-order differential equations. Math so advanced, most humans panic just hearing it. The description is pure 1920s poetry. Pencils draw the graphs of electrons' paths upon a sheet of paper. A mechanical contraption literally doing algebra on its own. And tucked near the bottom, this chilling line. Through some mechanical changes, the brain will be made 10 times as accurate. So yes, in 1929, they were already upgrading AI lobes. 
We just replaced gears and mercury drops with GPUs and existential dread. Indianapolis Times, November 4th, 1925. If you wanted to stare into the universe in 1925, you went to Mount Wilson, California. There, perched above the smog, stood the largest telescope in the world, a 100-inch mirror so precise it could magnify a thousand times and still focus light from galaxies millions of light years away. This was the telescope that Edwin Hubble used to discover that the universe is expanding. The paper called it the magic glass that helps us find new worlds. The story describes how the 9,000-pound mirror had to be kept in a water jacket so it wouldn't warp from heat. It was, as one astronomer said, an adventure comparable to a voyage across an unknown sea. In short, without this giant brass eyeball, we might still think the Milky Way was the whole show. Evening Star, November 25th, 1925. Captain Barnett Harris boarded a ship bound for Sumatra with a camera the size of a small car. The caption read, one of the largest movie cameras in the world. He was going to film the January 14th, 1926 total solar eclipse for Harvard's expedition. In the photo, he looks like a man about to photograph God. The camera weighed several hundred pounds and had to capture the brief moment the moon blotted out the sun, all on fragile film. It was a blend of science and cinema, half astronomy, half Hollywood dream. And it worked. Harris returned with the first moving images of a total eclipse. If you've ever watched a NASA live stream of the sun today, you're seeing the direct descendants of Captain Harris's monster camp. The Indianapolis Times, August, 1926. In 1926, if you wanted music on the go, there was no Bluetooth, no power cord, and definitely no shuffle button. You needed a crank. Enter the portable Super Master Music Phone, the ultimate picnic flex. It promised music anywhere, just the thing to carry along in the auto for camping parties and other outings. The case held 24 records and 100 needles. Because one waltz is fine, but 24? That's a road trip. It sold for $39.95, about $700 today, and was called Complete, Desirable, and Modern. No batteries, no playlists. Just wind it up, drop the needle, and fill the woods with jazz, polka, or whatever counted as dinner music in 1926. A century later, nothing's really changed. We still drag our speakers everywhere, still chasing the same thing. Good tunes, good company, and just enough volume to annoy the neighbors. El Paso Herald, October 30th, 1920. In 1920, a mechanic in Texas thought he'd cracked the biggest problem in auto repair, getting under the car without getting crushed by it. His invention, the turn auto, a 1,500 pound steel cradle that rotated an entire car like a rotisserie. A turn of the crank and the car rotates easily to any angle. A child can do it. The idea was brilliant. No pit, no lift, no dirt in your face. Just crank, rotate, and wrench away in comfort. But it didn't catch on. Why? It was massive expensive, and manual. Modern garages soon favored simpler vertical lifts. By 1925, Peter Lunati's rotary lift would become the gold standard, raising cars straight into the air with far less steel and strain. The turn auto faded. But its dream lived on in car turntables, rotary lifts, and every mechanic who ever thought, there's gotta be a better way to do this. The Milwaukee Leader, August 22nd, 1925. In 1925, one inventor promised to revolutionize personal wellness with a pair of mittens you plugged into the wall. They were called electric mittens for massage, and they offered what was proudly described as a triple massage, self-operated by the person who takes the treatment. Here's how it worked. You stood barefoot on a metal plate, pulled on the wired mittens, and rubbed yourself with a gentle electric current. When he rubs the mittens briskly over the surface of his body, the article said, the effect is that of a warm electric bath. Because what could go wrong with wet gloves and electricity? Each session promised three benefits, an electric massage to stimulate circulation, a mechanical massage from the rubbing, 
and thermostatic heat from the wet gloves. Basically, buzz, scrub, and sizzle. They were probably quite cozy for the few seconds before your sleeves caught fire. Still, the idea lived on. Every heated glove, sock, and jacket today owes a spark to these brave, tingly pioneers of personal electrification. The Milwaukee Leader, October 1925. North Carolina inventor Frank W. Benton found a new place to put ads, the ceiling above your head. He patented a display frame for barbershops, designed to hold cards and posters right above the customer's face. The idea? While you're getting a shave and can't move, well, you might as well read a few ads. The paper says, <clears throat> the busy man. Time spent in a barber's chair is a lamentable waste. Suppose, however, that while having his face scraped, he could occupy himself with the perusal of light literature. Light literature meaning toothpaste ad. Each frame could tilt to just the right angle to confront the upward gaze of customers, ensuring that even if he did not care to read, he could not help himself. Basically, a 1925 version of an autoplay video. You didn't ask for the ad, you couldn't skip it. You just sat there, lathered and held hostage by capitalism. Nearly a century later, not much has changed. The screens got smaller, the targeting got smarter, but the ads still find you when you can't look away. From seaplanes to mechanical brains, the 1920s weren't just roaring, they were inventing the future. Some of these gadgets fizzled, others reshaped the world. And all of them prove one thing, Every generation thinks it's living at the edge of innovation. But the truth is, the edge started a long time ago. The future wasn't waiting. It was already plugged in, in 1925. Like these videos, support our work by subscribing on YouTube, or watch any of our other videos, all real headlines and stories brought back to life.